Like everybody else, a narcissist has a daily routine as well. But there are some major differences between their routine and your routine. For example, you wake up with an intention of living a peaceful life that day, while as a narcissist wakes up, refreshes him or herself for one purpose, and that is to create chaos. They want hatred, you want love. They want power and dominance, you want connection and affection. They go out thinking they are somebody, they are better than everybody else. You go out thinking everybody is the same. Unity in diversity is the principle that guides you, but what guides them is a need for validation and to be important in everybody's eyes. Let's explore this further in today's episode. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today in this episode, we are going to overview a narcissist's daily routine from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. If that sounds interesting and you're eager to explore all of this with me, please make sure to subscribe before we begin. If you have not already, because your subscription to the channel helps spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. Let me hydrate myself to create all the chaos that I have planned to create today. After all, it takes a lot of energy to traumatize people, doesn't it? Uh, let me wash my hands of responsibility. Who wants to take that? No. Yeah, go away. Let me now put on a nice mask to fool some people in my life, yeah? Okay, there goes this fool who believes me, my colleague. Hi, good morning. How are you doing today? Oh, I missed seeing you. Yeah, 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 I'll be returning to work soon. Hope your children are okay. Now comes the time to put on the red mask because I want to punish my daughter for going no contact. Yeah, hi, good morning. What do you think of yourself? I gave birth to you. I made you who you are today. You're nothing without me. Shut up. Now comes the time to put on the victim mask and tell people, everybody has abandoned me. Yeah, Cassie, huh? Yeah, good morning. I can't tell you the pain I am in. My daughter, oh my God, she's a headache. She has a headache to deal with, I can't tell you what she has put me through. I have all these health problems to deal with, I don't know what to do with them. Yeah. Now is the sleep time, I don't care the, about the trauma that I have caused people because my supply tummy is full and now let's recharge for another day of chaos. So there you watched how a narcissist day is devoid of any reflection, any inner work, any true attempts made to establish connection with the loud ones, with the people they so depend on. Their day starts with an intention of creating chaos. They wake up and it's right from that moment. They bang doors. They toss and turn utensils, pots. They scream and yell at the top of their voice. They go around waking people up. Even if they are deep asleep, it doesn't matter who, sl who slept at what time. They have to make them tipped around the narcissistic nature of this because they want absolute subservience. They want compliance and obedience. I have a couple of experiences to share with you. Back when I had not gone no contact with my narcissistic family and when I used to live with them, my narcissistic father would wake up around... 5 a.m. in the morning to pray. After he was done, he would scream at the top of his lungs, switch on all the lights, toss and turn, drop utensils unnecessarily to wake up everybody without any consideration or empathy towards their schedule. He did not care about when the person slept, in what condition they fell asleep. He would bang on the door of my room and that would scare the hell out of me, which is why I kept struggling with sleep problems, that hypervigilance, that anxiety. I would not fall asleep easily and I would not sleep deeply because I knew this dirtbag is going to 
come rushing in the morning and bang on the door of my room and I'll have to wake up and I'll have to tell him, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm ready, I'm, I'm coming out and so on. He seemed to be full of energy, yet the other members of the family were completely exhausted, used to be completely drained and the reason was obvious. He used to feed on us all the time, suck that energy in and then begins the chaos. Breakfast time was never really breakfast time. It was torture time because he would interrogate us. He would shame us, blame us, put us down, humiliate us or other people. Worst case scenario, there would be a fight between him and his covertly narcissistic wife. Never would he ever let us have that breakfast in Peace. I can't recall a single morning that I right now can call peaceful or say, oh, that morning was different. Never. The only mornings, peaceful mornings I have ever had in my life were in his absence. He was not there. He was not a part of them. So that tells you how chaotic these people are. They just get started with that. It's the thrill that their nervous system needs. Once he was done with gaining that negative supply, he would go to his kitchen garden, call it, or a piece of land he used to work in. Mornings around these controlling dirt packs are extremely chaotic because you have to tiptoe around them. You have to do what they want you to do. You have to wake up at the time they want you to wake up at. Your night is not yours. Your day is not yours. Your sleep is not yours. Your eating is not yours. So how would you have any agency? People tell me, I don't feel like I have any self. How would you have any self if you were raised by this monster? It, it makes perfect sense why you struggle with knowing what you like, what you don't like, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, when you want to do it, because you were never allowed to have that space, to have that freedom to cho choose for yourself. Your life was driven not by love and compassion, but by fear, absolute terror of this narcissistic monster in your life. Once they are done filling their tank with the morning supply, they then move on with their day as you watched in that small video clip. Then begins the supply drill. Those who go to offices, whatever their source is, they go towards it. That can be calling people, different sources of supply or meeting people at workplace and putting on a mask, becoming really nice, sweet, helpful, kind. Or if it is an over grandiose narcissist who has power becoming extremely controlling, malignant, psychopathic, self-centered, empathy-less and ruling people, uh, putting people down, humiliating people, taking advantage of people's innocence. Whatever their power is, whatever their mechanism is of manifesting their narcissistic persona. Their whole day is spent interchanging these masks. With some people, they become really nice. With others, that extremely punitive, vindictive, Machiavellian, sadistic, spiteful, and disconnected. And some people get to see the victim side of them, those who can punish you, let's say. Maybe it's a family member of yours and they have to become the victim in front of them. Why? Because then you will be victimized through proxy. Do you understand? And they'll tell all the wrong things you have done to them and they'll talk about their suffering and pain that you have put them through. And then that family member, that friend will think, oh, you are such a monster for causing so much harm to your parent or to your friend or to your partner. Their entire day is spent in seeking validation, attention, admiration, adulation from others. They do not sit, sit with themselves. People take rest. People are, people are like, I need me time. I'm just exhausted with this socializing and all. I need to take, have a cup of coffee and I need to just close my eyes and sit. A narcissist would die if they were to do this. Yes, they might have a lot of caffeine and so on, but they will never sit with themselves and say, I need to close my eyes. They don't care. If they close their eyes, they drift off to sleep very quickly because they can't stay awake, think about themselves. They fall asleep very, 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 very quickly. They do not reflect. They do not take anything into account that may trigger that self-analysis and scrutiny. Their favorite activities of the day are 
gossiping, bad-mouthing people, lying, fighting, becoming the victim, showing that rage to those who are suppressed and oppressed and controlled by the narcissist, or putting on that nice mask to portray an image of being the family man or a family woman, whatever the label is, just to fool people. Then comes the end of their day. When people go to sleep, when they put their head on the pillow, normally thoughts start hitting them, thoughts of the past, guilt, shame, reflection. People think about what they did today and what they should have said, shouldn't have said. Basically, a lot of self-scrutiny, self-assessment, self-analysis goes on, and that is how we improve. But these people, none of that is done. None of that happens. If they're Supply tummy is full, they're off to bed. Two minutes and they're gone. I think a couple of seconds only. Yet there are some narcissists whose day begins the moment you try to fall asleep because this kind, this type, doesn't sleep at all. Then comes the torture and trauma. They don't let you sleep. Sleep deprivation in a narcissistic relationship is a real thing. I have created multiple episodes on it. You can watch one by clicking the i button above or the link in description. They don't let you fall asleep because they need that attention all the time. They need you to focus on them. They can't live without validation. So they program you to not fall asleep because they will be needing you. Everything in the house has to happen their way. If you by any chance once in a blue moon fall asleep, they will bang doors, they will drop utensils, they'll do bizarre shit to wake you up, they'll try to have arguments and fights the moment they know you're about to go to sleep. They'll bring up things, they'll try to talk about something in the past without any consideration for the fact that you have a work day tomorrow. I used to wonder, what fuels them? Everybody needs rest, but this kind, the kind, the narcissistic type that doesn't sleep, doesn't seem to be exhausted. Where do they get that energy from? Well, I have the answer. It is from you. They take that energy from you. There is a direct energy transfer that happens, believe it or not. How else would they be able to survive? They don't sleep at all. It's worse than being a night owl. And then when the moment comes, when the night is wasted, they have had that fight, you are distraught, you feel torn apart, will restfully, peacefully go back to the thing they were doing, drinking maybe, watching online porn, or some of them may fall asleep. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that bizarre? Isn't that evil? That is. In a nutshell, we can say a narcissist routine is in no way similar to yours because your routine comes of creating peace with others, working for yourself, for others, cooking, cleaning, for yourself, for others, just basically living a normal life. That is not chaotic. Who wants chaos in their life unless you're a narcissist? The narcissist wants the opposite of it. They have to feed of others. They have to impact others. They have to abuse others. They have to influence and fool others. They have to become the victim. They have to begin their day with absolute chaos so that they can feel in power because I battered my entire family psychologically. They are crying. Their entire day is ruined and that made me happy. Oh my God, what can be better than that? What a pathetic way of living. What a pathetic way of existing. The end of the day, further chaos, no rest at all. That was it for today's episode. I hope you found it insightful. And before you leave, I have a free gift for you. I have created a guide that answers top 10 questions asked by every single survivor of the narcissistic abuse that I try to talk about. You can download the guide right now by clicking the i button above or the link in the description. I'll talk to you. In the next episode, until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.